Good morning, church. Good to see you this morning. Good to see everybody on Facebook Live this morning. Welcome to worship on the seventh Sunday of Easter. Next Sunday, we celebrate the festival of Pentecost. And we call it Pentecost because, well, it's 50 days. It's been 50 days, and by next Sunday, it'll be 50 days since Easter. And so in this season of Easter, we remember and we celebrate what God in Christ does for us. Because sometimes we live in an environment in which it's really easy to say, oh, that's right, Easter was so long ago, right? It was just a day. It's not a day that we celebrate, it's a life that we live. This is who we are. We are resurrection people. We believe in hope and in care and in grace and in mercy. And right now, again in our country, mercy, hope, and peace, these are things that we need to pray for and live. And so we celebrate our lives as resurrection people, as people of a promise of hope and peace, and that we can work towards what Christ has called us to do. And so in this season, we celebrate, even in the midst of the crises of our world, not because we're ignoring them, right? But because the only way to get through them is to be on the right path. That's the way the world gets better. That's the way we fix it, is by following what Christ has called us to do. And so we begin our service throughout the season of Easter with a thanksgiving for baptism. Because it is in the baptismal waters that we are washed clean and brought to new life. And so I ask you to stand here in the sanctuary as you are able. And for those of you who are at home, get up off your, well, get up on your feet. <laughs> I have no idea what you got. You guys have the worst, oh. I tell you, this congregation, I, mean, I don't know what you guys were thinking. Now you're paying attention. Yeah, we're both. <laughs> we're definitely both. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to do things to go, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's a thing. All right. We begin. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ. And we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and you send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you. Our beginning and our end, 
our shepherd and lamb be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And remember, throughout the service, as you have opportunity, come to the font. Plunge your hands into the waters. Make the sign of the cross in remembrance of your baptism. There's no time for this. Anytime you want to come up during the service, I mean it. As the Spirit moves, come to the font. Remember your baptism. Amen. 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 Good morning, Mr. Billy. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, church. Good morning. Praise the Lord, church. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, get up off of you now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know one thing, that the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. Yeah. It is our strength. So when you feel some type of way, just lay on Jesus. He knows how to give you strength. In the hardest moments, he is always there. And like I say, every day is a what? A good day. A good day. Amen. You are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Help me sing it.
Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Bless those who will read to us the scriptures. Make us hunger for the word of life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. The first lesson is taken from Acts chapter 16, verse 16 through 34. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul very much annoyed (laughs) turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt and observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cells and fastened their feet in in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all of the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailers woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he, was, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell and trembled. He fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus and, he, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had been, that he had become a believer in God. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. The responsive reading is going to come from Psalms 97. Amen. The Lord is king. Mm-hmm. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlines be glad. Clouds and darkness. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightning up the Lord. 
The mountains melt the wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. All worshipers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boost in worthless idols, all gods bow down before him. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Light dawns for righteous, for the righteous, and God for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord for all your righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Thank you for the reading of the word. <coughs> Good morning, church. The second lesson comes from Revelations chapter 22, verses 12 through 14, then down to 16 through 17, and then 20 and 21. I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gate. And then 16. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angels to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit of the bride says, come, and let everyone who hear say, come. Let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Amen. Here's a reading of the second lesson. Amen. Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter, verses 20 through 26. Amen. John writes, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us, 
so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the Gospel of our Lord.
Amen. Yes, he has. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, about you. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And yet there are days when you pray and you pray. And sometimes it feels like nothing happens. And nobody is listening. You pray for the thing that you know, that you feel in your gut, that needs prayer most. Yes. Could be anything. Healing, yes. Patience. Employment. Strength, just to make it through another day. Hope. God, I've been praying for hope a lot lately. Direction. Purpose. And the other one that hits right at the top of my list right now, peace. But there are more. An end to white supremacy. That'd be nice. An end of misogyny. I pray often that more people would shake off apathy and ignorance. The kind of thing that they have wrapped around themselves like a weighted blanket and refuse to take off. It's so comfortable to not know. And to not care. It's easier, it seems. We pray in earnest that there will be no more George Floyds. We pray and we pray and we pray that Uvalde, Texas will be the last random place in the United States that we can now find on a map solely because of gun-fueled mass murder. I don't know about you. I'm tired of learning about where these places are. I'm glad they exist, but I didn't really need to know. We pray and we pray. We hope that something happens. A change takes place. That someone acts. God's been good, yes, yes. But it's crushing. It's heartbreaking. It's frustrating. It's maddening when sometimes it feels like nothing is happening. And at that moment, it's so understandable that we may be moved to throw in the towel. The frustration, the despair, it's understandable. And I think it's why, well, we look around. And the churches just aren't as full as they used to be. <coughs> and yeah, a lot of people have just been driven out because of dumb things people in the church have said. Horrible, racist, bigoted ways that they've acted. But I think sometimes people just lose faith. They lose hope. They fall into despair. And I sometimes wonder if Jesus' prayer in today's gospel, when he prays that we might all be one, is that one of those times when Jesus comes closest to despair? 
I mean, think of it. The things that we pray for, think about what Jesus hopes for us. How crushing and heartbreaking and frustrating and maddening that seemingly unanswered prayer is for Jesus himself. The whole 17th chapter of John is Jesus' long prayer. That we might be one. That love would be the way we would live. Throughout his ministry, throughout, Jesus has been showing everyone just what he means by all of this. By what it means to be one. What it means to love. What it means to look out for one another. Think of all of the different kinds of people that Jesus interacts with throughout the Gospels. It's an ongoing story of Jesus breaking down borders and boundaries and barriers. It's a story of time after time after time of Jesus reaching out and lifting up and welcoming in everybody. All people. I mean, you can just go through the list. The Samaritan woman at the well. The lepers. The grateful one and all the ungrateful ones. The Syrophoenician woman. A little guy named Zacchaeus, right? And you're thinking, well, he was just an official, wasn't he? Why is that such a big deal? He was a tax collector for the Romans. Think he was the first person that people invited to dinner? The Gerasene demoniac, the woman with the hemorrhage. She had been bleeding for most of her life and nobody would touch her and there's Jesus. How about the woman who is about to be stoned to death for adultery? Everybody else thought she was a pariah, and yet Jesus steps in. The feeding of the 5,000, which is probably more the feeding of the 15,000, if you start counting everybody up, Jesus didn't say, whoa, wait a minute, before you can have bread and fish, where are you from? Do you fill out the right forms? To speak the right language. Well, we don't want to feed one of you people before we feed one of our people. Jesus just fed the people. Or how about the fact that the littlest ones in their society, children, right? Jesus welcomed them in. Nobody in the ancient world would have done that. Children were meant to be seen, never heard, never interacted with. I know some people in congregations who are like that. Children, oh, no. Back when I was younger, kids knew their place. Yeah, usually not in the sanctuary. God forbid they might make noise. And then we wonder, I wonder why there are no kids in our congregation. Seems to follow. Maybe it's just me. The Roman centurion. The criminal on the cross. I mean, this doesn't even take into account the disciples. You wouldn't invite the disciples into your house, right? They were a bunch of fishermen and other things, less savory than even that. And this doesn't even take into effect or take into account all those who were drawn to Jesus before he was even old enough to speak. Shepherds, angels, wise men. Jesus' whole ministry, all of his teachings, his very Every interaction speaks to the inherent dignity and preciousness and connection of every person Jesus meets to the one who created us all. And if we are all created by the same God, that means that we are all connected one to another. Every single one of us. There's nobody better or worse. It's just us. And this isn't an accident. 
Jesus doesn't just stumble into doing this every now and then. It's what he does every single time. And it's what he did when he passed you through the waters of baptism. You didn't take Jesus into your heart. Jesus claimed you as his own. Thank you, Lord. You. Me. Jesus will take anybody. Because we are all one. One creation. This is what Jesus does throughout his ministry. And this is what Jesus has been calling us to do from the very start. To see. To look at each other. And to see each other. As Jesus sees us. If we did just that alone. See each other. As God sees us. And to know. Deep in our bones. That we are all children of the same creator. That we are all. All of us. No matter where we live around the world. No matter where our ancestors came from. We are all made in God's image. And we are all created good. There's nobody or any person, no matter who they are, what language they speak, or who they love, that wasn't created good. Good. And that every single one of us, God loves unconditionally. It's not based on what you earn, it's not based on your merit. It's not based on your worthiness. God loves you. Period. That's who you are. That's who we all are. Because of whose we are. One. One people. God's beloved. But I think Jesus may edge on the verge of despair because we sure don't act like it. All we have to do is open our eyes and see the long, sin-soaked story of racism that rips through our story. Or the just as sin-soaked scourge of misogyny that has fought long and hard to deny women equal status. Oh, no, no. Right? You'll hear men say this all the time. Or how about this one? We're really good at this. We create wholly artificial borders and boundaries. Be they a fence or a wall, a line in the sand, or just some imaginary line of separation. And we say, all right, if you're on this side, you're us. If you're on that side, you're them. Or how about the way that we've wielded the term sinner to include any person who does things that we don't like? Or who loves another person in ways that offend our sensibilities. Right? The way we ostracize and demonize and dehumanize anyone that we have deemed other. The way that we treat other people in our immediate lives as marks. Right? Folks that we can exploit or use. People we can cheat or take advantage of. Folks that we can treat as a mere object of my desire. You don't actually exist on your own. You're just there to make me something. Right? We look at other people 
as if they're simply commodities that we can consume. Or the way we just write people off as unworthy of our care and sympathy because life has brought them low. How did we get so good at kicking people when they're down? Well, you must have done something wrong to get in this spot. God must not like you at all. Oh, I'm sure God's thinking something at that moment. We are endlessly creative in the way that we divide. And it's not who we're supposed to be. And so, throughout the entire chapter of chapter 17 in the Gospel of John, Jesus pours himself out in prayer. Pours himself out in prayer. And this prayer splashes across the verses of the whole chapter. And when they're said, makes all the difference in the world. Because in this moment, Judas has already left the Last Supper to go betray Jesus. There's nothing left in Jesus' life except the trial and the crucifixion. These are his last words. And when you've got last words and you know this is the last thing that you're going to be able to say to the people around you, you got to give them the thing that matters most. And when Jesus prays, he's praying that we might all be one. Now, Jesus isn't talking about uniformity. Jesus isn't praying that we would somehow lose our unique selves. That we would no longer be what makes us who we are. Unique. Precious. That's not what's happening. Jesus isn't just saying, I want you to all be homogenous. Right? Right? What Jesus is praying is that like his relationship with God, the Father and the Holy Spirit, that we would be one, connected. Not the same, but united in whose we are and what we are called to do. Jesus says, I in them and you in me that they may be completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus is still praying that we would see each other as God sees us. And there's something vital about this prayer, about every prayer. It's not just a word spoken into the wind. A prayer isn't a wish or an incantation. A prayer is conversation, aspiration, hope for what could be and what we can do to make that happen. Prayer is nothing short of a call to action. I know you probably have tired of me trotting out this line whenever I'm talking about prayer, but as Pope Francis says, you pray for the hungry, and then you feed them. That's how prayer works. Jesus didn't pray that we might be one and then sit on his hands. He hadn't been sitting on his hands his entire ministry. He shows us step by step person by person, teaching by teaching, encounter by encounter. Jesus shows us how to live together. Jesus shows us how to see each other as he sees us. Jesus shows us 
how to forgive. And it may be the most important lesson of all. Because when you forgive, you are set free. Jesus shows us how to serve. But that service is always as equals in the eyes of God. Jesus shows us how to love one another. But even then, but even then, Jesus didn't leave it there, right? It's not just, okay, I've given you some wisdom and some teachings. Have at it, right? He doesn't just, he's not just standing up there talking, right? He doesn't just give us a lesson plan and says, all right, you figure it out how to do that. He shows us the power of his example throughout his years of ministry. Every single word, every single interaction is a lesson for us that we should take to our hearts. And then, even then, he wasn't done. Jesus then promised the disciples that even though that he was going to go to a place that they could not go, that there would be another, an advocate, the Holy Spirit, who would be with us to stir in us hope and vision and promise and peace that even in those hardest days when we can see nothing else the spirit is with us teaching us showing us giving us the knowledge that we are all God's beloved children no matter the day that we might be having And even then, it's not enough. For Jesus then empties himself on the cross so that we might live as one. Because here's the thing. It's the only way, right? It's the only way. We've tried every other way. We've tried it. We've done it our way. We've decided that Jesus doesn't know what he's talking about. And so we've said, oh, no, we got it. And that's where it's gotten us. So the only way forward, the only way out of the chaos that we create is the path that has been laid out for us since the very beginning. The only way forward, the only way we solve the problems in our world is to see each other as God sees us. You say, that's great, Pastor. But what about those people who will never look at me and see God's beloved? What about then? And I have to admit, I wish I had a better answer. But the only way they're ever going to get there is by our example. And that's hard because it puts the burden of doing the right thing on the good people. But the weight of our example matters, it has an effect, it will make a difference. The only way forward is to see each other as God sees us. The only way forward is to welcome each other as Jesus welcomes us with open heart and open arms. The only way forward is the way of peace. Yes, it's time to start turning our swords into plowshares. It's time to get rid of of weapons of war off our streets. The only way forward is love. Not hate. Not bigotry. Not recrimination. Not violence. Love. Active 
love that guides people to a better path. Love isn't passive. Nobody's sitting there saying that you should just take it. But what you give has got to be something that is going to build people up, not tear them down. It's the only way. Because we've tried every other way. We've tried violence. We've tried recrimination. We've tried hatred. We've tried to beat people into submission. And it doesn't work. It just creates a cycle of violence that ends in everybody's death. We know it doesn't work. And so let us go the only way forward. That is Jesus' prayer. And he never gives up on us. Never throws in the towel. No matter how frustrating it may get. And I'll guarantee you, Jesus never gave in to the kind of despair because Jesus, frankly, has a lot more reasons than we to feel frustrated about what's not happening, right? If anybody's got a good reason to be a little frustrated with the way that we've been doing things, I think it's Jesus. And yet he doesn't give up on us. He doesn't go the route of recrimination and punishment. He goes in the only way that works. To love. And he worked every single moment to bring his own prayer to fruition. And he sent the Holy Spirit so that the work would continue. And that the flame of hope in us would remain alive. But our old selves, right? Right now, there's that part of you right now that are like, no, that's nice, Jesus. That's really nice. But you're being wildly optimistic, too idealistic, right? It's very nice. But we live in the real world, Jesus. And that's not the way the world works. And so we're going to keep trying to fight our way to peace. Recriminate our way to justice. Punish our way to love. We're going to keep building walls. And we're going to keep knocking down those whom with we disagree. And yet, in the stirring of the Holy Spirit, we have seen the power that love can change lives. We've seen change for the better. Make no mistake, we may be taking three steps forward and two and a half steps back, but we are making progress. We are moving forward. There are moments when God's unity shines through even us, as flawed and as sinful as we are, and we move forward, knowing that following Jesus is the only way. And so though we pray and we pray and we pray, we do not lose hope. We do not despair. For Christ continues even in this very moment, in this room, to show us the way forward. The Spirit continues to intercede and stir in us hope and peace and, yes, love. 
Jesus' prayer is that we might be one in God's love, and that's our prayer today as well. That has to be our prayer today, this very moment. It's the only way forward. Jesus has shown us the way. He has led the way. He has blazed the trail for us. For all of our sakes. Time to follow. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Got a few announcements this morning. Um, a very quick reminder, leadership and the ministers will be meeting immediately following worship. We hope to, I know it's Memorial Day weekend. We hope to keep this succinct. So for the ministers, right, during the Eucharist, pray about what you need to bring before the leadership and the ministers. Um, succinctly, right? We'll be in and out, and we'll off to be enjoying this um, beautiful day. Um, but thank you for being willing to meet. It's important for us to continually touch base, um, especially as we are ramping back up um, in all of our activities. All right, a um, couple of other things um, coming up on the calendar. We are going to celebrate our graduates on June 19th. Um, and so I need to know who those graduates are. <laughs> um, if you know of somebody who is graduating high school or college this year, um, probably has already walked across the stage or will very soon, please let me know like this week. Um, that would be awesome. Um, and then we will have a celebration on June 19th, which also happens to be Juneteenth. Um, and so it's a great time to celebrate um, the achievements of our community. And so please put that on your calendars. Likewise, please put um, June 25th, Saturday, June 25th, from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, we are going to have Alter Guild training. Um, the other pastor, Grant, um, who is far more adept at um, this kind of stuff, is going to be coming down to Genesis to lead an Alter Guild training. If you are, have been a part of Alter Guild, need a little refresher, that's everybody. If you have not been a part of Alter Guild and would like to help, which we really would like to encourage you to say yes to that, please come along. Um, Two hours, Saturday, um, June 25th. It's going to be an awesome refresher and explanation and why we do what we do, why Alter Guild does what they do, and how to do it. Great stuff. Really looking forward to that. You'll be more information in our weekly newsletter um, as we get closer, but um, put that on your calendars. All right. Um, speaking of things that are on our calendars, um, we have three birthdays this week. Um, May 31st. Which is that Tuesday, thank you very much, um, Norma um, Caesar, Norma Jean Caesar celebrates her birthday. Um, on June 1st, um, Corey Barnett celebrates her birthday. Is she going to be three? Four? I've lost a year, at least. Four? She can't be four. Corey Barnett turns four on June 1st, and then Anthony Richardson Jr. celebrates his birthday on June 2nd. We're not going to ask him how many birthdays that is. <laughs> um, so happy birthday to all of those celebrating birthdays this week. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody who um, wished um, Pastor Denise um, and myself a happy anniversary. Um, I do believe that the 32nd anniversary is the stainless steel anniversary because I, being the hopeless romantic, bought my wife a brand new dishwasher. <laughs> and it's stainless, right? Yeah. Has to be the stainless anniversary. Yeah. Now, of course, we, she told the same joke, so don't get your, you know, I'm not being. Um, and it's not like we wanted to, it just died. So congratulations, right? Um, last thing, next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. 
the third major festival of the church in which we celebrate the church, the beginning of the church, um, the stirring of the Holy Spirit. Um, it is also each one bring one Sunday. Um, if you did not have a chance to get one of these postcards, there is still time to hand one of these. You could probably mail it, eh, maybe, if you did it tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. Post office is closed. Maybe you should just hand deliver these now at this point. Um, to invite somebody to come to church with you next Sunday. That's next Sunday. Um, so please, um, if you haven't had the opportunity to invite somebody, do that this week. All right? Also, um, we are going to um, be putting together welcome bags for all of our guests next week. Um, we're going to put those together before church next Sunday. So I need a few volunteers to come early enough that we can put together, I don't know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know how many bags we're going to make. because And this is important for Sarita because she's making cookies. <laughs> um, make enough. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking, I, I, my, my hope is 20, right? You know, if we get 20 visitors next week, would be amazing. Um, so that's what we're shooting for. I have high hopes and great aspirations, and I have great faith in this community to, to, to reach out to folks and say, this is a great place to be church. So, um, so I need a couple people to come here. I'll be here by 8.30 next Sunday. You don't have to get here that early. Right, everybody's like, oh, thank goodness, because that was not going to happen, right? People are still looking at me like, yeah, 10 o'clock, Pastor, is almost too early for this whole thing to start, and maybe we could talk about that at some point. Um, but I need a few people to do that so we can put bags together. Um, I bought um, some, some items, pens and chip clips and things like that. They're going to go in the bag, we're going to have a flyer, we're going to have cookies, and that's what they'll go reaching for first, are the cookies, because, you know, baked goods. Um, so, and then I invite everybody just to be here a little bit early next week, because hopefully we'll have visitors um, in the congregation, and we want to roll out the red carpet, as it were. Um, this is an opportunity for us to reach out and to invite in, right? And so I want you to, I want to encourage you to do just that. Um, the... Um, Liturgical dancers are going to be dancing next Sunday in celebration for um, Pentecost Sunday and the Each One Bring One um, Sunday. So lots of great things. We are also going to have a little bit of fellowship afterwards outside. Um, and so the fellowship team, um, hint, hint. I, I mean, I, we've talked about this, so they know that this is not like this is the first time they've heard it. They're like, wait, what? When did this happen? Pastor, don't just make stuff up when you're standing up there. No, we've talked about this. So, um, but we'll have fellowship outside. We've missed having fellowship. One of the things that COVID has done, not only did it take away being able to be in the building, but it's taken away our time to just sit around and talk, um, which this congregation, and eat, this congregation does both of those things really well. We're going to start doing that again. Um, I'm, no joke. I mean, fellowship is one of the strengths of this congregation. It's just one of those great opportunities for the community to gather. We need to do that, and we've missed it. And so, don't forget, next week. All right, more than enough announcements. Did, did I miss anything? Sarita's like, no, get the hook. <laughs> oh, yeah, Rosa. We're red. Yes, next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, so if you would like, please wear red, because we will definitely deck out the church in the um, appropriate liturgical color, which is red. Um, thank you, Rosa, appreciate that. All right. Those are all the announcements. Um, thank you so very much for your patience. A lot of announcements means a busy, active church. That's a good thing. Um, so thank you and praise God for all the ministry that is being done through Genesis and into this community. All right, at this time, what we're going to do is we're going to take a moment, set the table for the Eucharist, and then we will continue on with the prayers of the church.
please stand. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Make worthy the work of scientists who look to the stars as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules. Bring innovation and well-being to humanity through their discoveries. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilian. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry. We pray especially this day for those we name silently or aloud. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church in the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence. Merciful God, hear our prayer. God of resurrection. We remember before you those who have died, children, teachers, and staff of Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. We commend them to your eternal love. Grant healing and wholeness to the survivors who are wounded or traumatized, and restore all whose spirits are maimed by such violence, that we may serve as your arms of care to those in distress. Make us instruments of your peace. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. Merciful God, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. praise. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us in the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your so chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted and to break bread with the outcast and despised and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me.
For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together to pray the prayer that Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Come, for the table is set, and all are welcome.
Let us join together in the post-communion prayer. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us forth from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, in the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.